Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 0363659 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. I will request you uh, for us to begin tonight to read Matthew 24. Can we all read Matthew chapter 24? I don't mind if we read it together. Uh, Whatever version you carry, let's read the word of God together. We'll start from verse 1. And we'll get down to verse 14 and stop for this evening. Shall we? Are we ready? Are we ready? I want all of us to read the Word of God uh, together. And to do so, can I request, in honor to the Lord and to the Word of, of God, would you like to stand on your feet as we read the Scriptures? Let's stand together as we read the Scripture. Matthew 24 We are reading the first 14 verses One to go And Jesus went out And departed from the temple And his disciples came to him For to show him The buildings of the temple And Jesus said unto them See ye not all these things Verily I say unto you There shall not be left here One stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take it that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many and ye shall hear of words and rumors of words see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places all this at the beginning of sorrows. Nine. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. While the Lord Jesus Christ was about concluding his ministry on earth, there were several questions that even the disciples themselves were confronting him with. They were asking questions. Part of their question, which as continue to recall 
It's a recurrent question from one generation to another. And what was that question? You know, they quickly came and they showed Jesus the buildings, the structures, as if to say, Look, Lord, look at this kind of thing that has been done. And Jesus Christ, in response, said to them, See you not all these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. The destiny of this world is already clear. Brothers and sisters, without scaring you, this world is running to its final collapse. The civilization of the world has reached a climax. But that civilization is going to nose die. People are going to almost become barbaric as days continue to come. Some of the things that men are glory in that appears as if oh, is a new advancement. Actually, it's but a pointer unto the total collapse. Total collapse. Some people have called it different names. Some have called it postmodernism. They have come to the end of everything they could, they could discover in modernism. And they are going backward. Some few years ago, I was watching a commentary where a group of people decided that they want to go back on to stark nudity, where they are not going to wear any, any dress at all, not even a little underwear. And they were looking excited. And it was televised all over the world. And it was like an achievement. And they were going to supermarket naked. They were going everywhere. Stark naked. Men and women. They are just moving like that. And someone went across and said, Ah, you feeling it? I'm enjoying it. In fact, I'm just feeling, I'm just feeling good. I'm just feeling that now I am original. And as I'm watching them, I smile to myself and say, mm, This world is passing away. And everything therein is. We are going to read that uh, very quickly as I'm about to conclude. The Lord Jesus Christ did not mean word when he said, do you see all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Whereas that statement had a particular application unto the temple of Jerusalem at that time. That has taken place. The whole thing has been brought down and they are seen, and they are seen those places now. In fact, what is standing there now is a mosque. But we are asked that particular prophecy could be applied directly to what has happened to temples. I'd like to say that that statement of the Lord Jesus Christ is actually the destiny of the entire world. That is going to be the end of it all. A time comes when there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. The disciples came back when he sat privately. They came to him privately. They said, Tell us 
When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the world? Many, many questions. But you see, like I began to speak about this the other day, I realized that we are asked what usually excites people is to want us to settle down and begin to analyze at what time, in what year, in what manner will the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ be? And a lot of people will like to go into eschatological studies, all kind of analysis. Some are beginning to watch the stars now. And they say the way it is turning now. We are thinking that in another number of years. But I found that in all scripture. The Lord Jesus Christ never put emphasis. Neither does he even allow himself. To be pinned down to a corner. As to be dealing with the kind of calculations. That many people will like him to deal with. And tonight I just wish. I would like to draw your attention to a few things as we begin this meeting. The first thing I saw was Jesus saying, Take it. Take it to yourself. That no man be save you. It looks to me as if the only way to prepare for the end time, the only way to get ready for the end time, Is to take heed to yourself. Is to take heed to your personal lives. Is to take heed to the way you are living. That no man deceive you. He said, Many shall come in my name, many will say, I am Christ. And they will deceive many. We have come to this generation now where there is a lot of self deception. People have imposed themselves. Many, many people have taken over the pulpits and they say whatever they feel and will. And they have captured the heart of many and they have obscured. Lord of glory. They have drawn attention to themselves. They are more popular even than the Lord who went to Calvary on our behalf. They look more powerful. Church members are made to fear. They are intimidated because these persons they impose their personality and many, many, many shall be deceived. And many have been deceived. They themselves are being deceived and they are deceiving others. But what did Jesus say to us? Take heed, take heed that no man deceive you. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Excuse me. Any of you that have been listening to news, world news, the one o'clock news, when you listen to it on radio, or now that we have the cable networks, anytime you turn into any news, what is it that is dominant in all our news? Wars. Wars. You know, many times people are discussing it as if it is just uh, an ordinary conflict. Even where you don't expect people to be so barbaric. Wars. As you finish one, another one breaks. As you are settling one, another one is starting. And people think it was just natural. It's just that people are having conflicts. 
No. Jesus Christ said, You will hear words, and there will be rumors of words. He said, Don't be troubled. All these things must come to pass. All these things, they must do what? Come to pass. But the end is not yet. Do you remember that? Twice now, there was the world war. The first world war, and everybody thought that that is going to be the end of everything. So many propounded theories because as the world war was breaking, it looked as if it will finish everywhere. But the Lord who cannot, who cannot fail in bringing his world to pass, he said the end is not yet. The second world war came. The end is not yet. The Gulf War came. The end is not yet. Several wars have been taking place. And several wars will still take place. Even as we watch things go. But because the Lord said that is yet not the end. We will hear more and more of wars. Now as you are hearing this. What I sense God wants me to share with you tonight is not that you should panic, but you should just know that the time of our departure is very close at hand. Nations shall rise against nations, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, do you know what challenged my heart? Is that when these things were happening, despite the fact that we have advanced technologically, despite that we now have equipment that can help us to predict the speed of the hurricane, Despite that we have given it even special names. And you will see people sitting on their computer. They say it will arrive here so and so time. You will have thought that they should be able to stop it. But they can only describe it. They cannot stop it. Men have become helpless. In, in the last few years and in fact in the past few months or weeks. Things that you never expect to happen in the first world, to happen in the most advanced nations of the world, they are happening and nobody could do anything about it. Floods are sweeping over not just ordinary villages, sweeping over big cities, and it appears as if everybody is helpless. The Bible says there shall be famines, there shall be pestilences, there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. In diverse places. It will be happening here and there. You'll be hearing it has happened here, it has happened there, it has happened here. The other time when it was happening in Indonesia, everybody said, Oh, let's go to Indonesia to go and help. Suddenly he struck on this other side. He struck on that side. Oh God. I pity the man. The UN uh, general secretary was running up and down. What can he do? The world is passing away. Tell somebody on your side. Say this world is passing away. You can't stop it. The world and everything therein is, they are passing away. 
But you see, when Jesus Christ was going to speak, he said, All this, what are they? They are just the beginning of sorrows. They are the beginning. If I tell you that I have hope in the world, it will be a great lie. I lost every hope in the world system and whether it could ever improve several years ago I lost hope in it. In the early 80s, I think 81, 82 something happened in Nigeria and we started talking about austerity measures. Do you remember austerity measure of the early 80s? And as I began to speak, I had a series of meetings and I wanted to study. And as I went on praying, it became clear to me that the economy of the world will never, never become stronger than it was. That the austerity measure we were talking about then, it's not going to be peculiar to Nigeria. It's going to go all over. It's going to affect the strongest currencies of the earth. And any of you that have been studying and you have been looking at economics very well, you will know that the strength of the nations are getting weak. Have you noticed that? You are noting now that the strength of nations are growing weaker and weaker and weaker. Of course, the man of the world will not confess that he is losing control. He will continue to pretend that we are in charge. But may I inform you that this world is passing away. And everything therein is, they are passing away. The Lord raised other issues which we may not speak about particularly tonight before we will pray. said, there shall be a wave of, of persecution. He said, they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. They will kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Again, I must say that that, in a particular sense, took place. But in a general sense, is that which is coming. It has come before, but it will keep coming. And more and more, as I see the discussion going on in the world, the discussion going on especially in some of the advanced countries, we are quietly, they are putting pressure and seeking to exterminate the name of Jesus Christ. Where they are beginning to say, you cannot say Jesus Christ is Lord. You are being intolerant. A situation where churches are coming under censorship as regards what they must preach and how they must preach. Of course, persecution has started and it will increase as the days go by. A lot of things are coming. May I remind you that democracy will not, will not prevent it. Human rights, may I inform you, human rights laws, they are not about you. They don't, they don't defend the, the right of the Christian. Everyone else has a right. It's only a child of God. There has no right to be who he ought to be in this world. But they would like to say the human rights is the reason why you cannot practice your conviction in the word of God. Now this is going to happen more and more. It's already beginning. 
and we need to be aware of where we presently stand. Many false prophets will arise. Do you know there are many prophets already? Eh? Oh my God. Maybe some of you think that false prophets are those that wear white garments. No. There are many false prophets that are wearing suit, wear dress right now. They speak impeccable English. But when you listen to what they are saying, you know that they are only playing upon the intelligence and the ignorance of men. False prophets, soothsayers, shall rise. And what will they do? They will deceive many. I don't have space and I'm not going to spend time on that. But now I want you to come with me to verse 12, verse 13, and verse 14. The Bible said, Because iniquity shall abound. One of the characteristics of the end time is that iniquity will do what? Will abound. Iniquity in different shapes, in different shades, in different dimension, iniquity will multiply. Iniquity that you never imagine anybody could think about. They will be devised. If anybody said to us 50 years ago that gay marriage will become an issue and that certain pastors will ever be very very bold to come out and say they want to officiate the wedding of a man and a man ah do you ever imagine that that could ever happen but now nah. and they are making it a law as if if you don't do it you are denying certain people of their own human rights. Because iniquity shall abound. Iniquity will multiply. The kind of things we are going to be seeing will be unheard of. The kind of wickedness that you are going to be encountering all the time. And if iniquity is just going to be in the market would have said well it's in the world but iniquity will also abound even in the sanctuary and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall do what? shall was cold the love of many Their passion for God. Please hear me very well. I have not said that there will not be multiplied church meetings and activities. There will be. But it will be a gathering together of compromisers. Of people who have redefined what sin is. And who no longer get pricked in their hearts. Whose love for Jesus has was cold. They will be lovers of themselves. They will be lovers of pleasure. They will be lovers of money. But they will not be lovers of God. Because iniquity will abound. The Bible says the love of many shall do what? shall was called but he that shall endure to the end the same shall be saved before I go away from this because that's where I want to conclude our church tonight Jesus now said and this gospel of the kingdom Whereas everything else we have been reading He said the end is not yet The end is not yet But now he says And this gospel 
of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. While we are sitting together in this meeting by the grace of God we shall engage one another first in understanding what is this gospel of the kingdom. We will engage one another both in the Bible study and you will see that there is an elaborate Bible study in your booklet. In our professional workshops we are going to engage one another. How do we express this gospel of the kingdom in our professional platforms? We shall engage one another in the course of this meeting. What does God want us to do in response to this generation that is needing the greatest help? What is it that God is demanding us to do as we begin to look at nations? As we begin to look at all that surrounds us where the word of God is must be preached for a witness unto all nations and there shall the end come. Brothers and sisters, what is my charge to you tonight? What will the Holy Spirit have me place before you as you set you into this meeting? What will God have me put across to you tonight? Even before we take our journey into this meeting all together. There are a few words that have reoccurred again and again as we read Matthew. But I trust that I could tie it together. I could tie it together as I ask you to read just a passage and then we shall pray together. Would you like to go with me? Would you like to please go with me to 1 John? 1 John chapter 2. And there's a very brief word there. And that will be for us now. 1 John and chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. I'll read verse 15, verse 16, 17, 18. You can read it all, but I just will draw a charge and I'll stop. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What is in the world? For all that is in the world you can put it together and summarize it like this. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, they are not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God does what? Abides forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many, many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is, it is, the last time. 
God has brought us to discuss with our lives what must be our action what must be my personal action in view of everything that is going on around us in view of everything that is happening in view of the world system that is advancing and rushing towards its own end in view of all manipulations that is happening in our generation in view of all that is being discussed in the media that is being discussed oh when the bible said men will be lovers of pleasure you've never seen that before it's so wonderful if I were to tell you today that the boys that didn't finish their secondary school, some barely finished and they went into footballing. An average footballer ends maybe 20 times than a professor. We have come into a generation where those who are in the entertainment industry they are richer than researchers. Are we together? We have come to a generation where those who are in the pleasure industry they are more prominent they look more important than those who are involved in essential services. What is the meaning of that? The world is going on its own course. But what is my charge to you? You who have identified with the heavenly kingdom you who have said i am not of the world why the world is going down on its own course what are you doing about your own journey what are you doing about your own destiny i am not surprised with what the world is doing i am not surprised about the way the world is doing their own things I am not surprised about the way the world system is rolling out its own agenda. So the Bible says they will do. But the critical matter this night is for you who say you are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Who claim that this world is not your own and that you are going to heaven. What are you doing about your own journey? What are you doing about your own focus? What are you doing about your own destiny? And I charge you tonight that while we sit in this meeting, God will be speaking critically on what you must engage yourself with while the world is running on its own course. What you must spend and be spent about. Why the world system? We can't stop the world from doing what it's doing. But we can impact our own generation. Why we have the day. The night is coming where no man can walk. Tonight, there are three issues that I want you to chew in your heart as you respond to God. Number one, where is your love? What do you love? Who do you love? One of the first things that 
will happen in the world and at the end time is unfolding there will be a battle for your affection there will be a battle for your focus there will be a battle for where your heart is I'm not saying that you will not be religious I'm not saying that there will be no activities that people are involved in but the first question that Jesus Christ is going to be checking he will be checking where is your first love what is your first love he was talking to that church he said I know your works but I have something against you what is it you have left what your first love as I read that scripture again and again, I realized that he was saying, you have left me as your first love. I am no more your first love. You love something else. And if I were to put my thoughts together, the first challenge that will face us in the end time is the challenge of your affection. Where is your love? Who do you love? What are you running after? Love not the world. When we say love not the world, it could be ambiguous. But the Holy Spirit is saying, love not the things that are in the world. Because if any man love the world, he cannot possibly say the love of the Father is in himself. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Everything that the world system is presenting, and they are doing it very deliberately, and they will do it much more, much, 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 much more. The digital technology is going to continue to expand. What we never thought is possible before will be happening very very rapidly and the first thing it will be looking for is to make you an addict it would like to capture you and enslave you as the days are coming the Lord Jesus Christ said I am coming soon but take heed to yourself where is your love that's my first challenge to you what has dominated your affection? What is it that is preoccupying your heart? Sometimes you are deceived to say, Yeah, yeah, let's, let's make it here, let's make it here. It's okay. Why you seek to make it here? May I beg you to make sure you make it up there. Make it up there. And God will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. What is the second challenge? I want to draw to you. Because the word passes away and the loss thereof, the Bible says, He that doeth the will of God is the one that dies forever. The word is passing away. Everything therein, all is fashion. Including those who became slaves of the world system. They will also pass away. Even if you became a preacher who only preaches for the world, you will pass away with the world. Even if you engage your strength in that which the world system is only emphasizing, you will pass away with it. But only he that doeth the will of God from the heart abides forever. You remember the verse 13 says, But he that endure to the end shall be saved. What are you going to do? The end time is here. One thing I am sure of is that we cannot stop the world from going down is going down 
But it is in the midst of this that God is speaking to us of revival. It is in the midst of this that God is saying, and this gospel must be preached in all the nations. It is in the midst of this darkness that we are going to see the glory of God breaking forth upon his people. Where do you throw your lot? Where do you throw your life? And what do you hope to be remembered for? Finally, Peter said, Seeing that all these things will pass away, what manner of men ought we to be? As I ask you to join me in prayer tonight, let me ask you to please ponder for one minute. As the world system, with the manipulation of the end time, as he captured your inner man, is your love for Jesus as strong as ever? Is your love waxing cold? Sin as he crept into your understanding to the point that it doesn't look as sinful as it used to be to you before. You now have good explanation for misbehavior. And maybe because the love of many has was cold, iniquity has abounded. You no longer have reference. Even when you meet brothers, it doesn't matter again what they do. Their lives no longer brings any challenge to you. And you thought, well, I'm not alone. Uh, everybody is doing it. Let me join them. As we pray together, I will ask you, we have just started this meeting tonight. And as I welcome you to this great, great time with God, I must begin by asking you, where is your allegiance? Is Jesus still central in your consideration? Are you still looking for the glory that God has promised us? Are you still concerned about loving Him with all your heart, with all your spirit, and with all your soul? In the midst of all this, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the nations, for a witness and then the end shall come but you won't preach the gospel when you yourself have become a victim you won't be able to stand against the storm that the world system is bringing when they have their own thing in you one thing that Jesus said he said the prince of this world comes but he has found nothing in me. Can I ask? The prince of this world is come. And is coming. And they are coming very forcefully. As he found a foothold in your heart. As he found a reason to tear you apart. As the days approach. As the Lord's coming knocks on our hearts. As the end time comes and we see it every day, every day, every day. What manner of men, what manner of women ought you to be? Especially in the way you live your life. But may I remind you that Jesus Christ stands in our midst tonight. And if he just wanted you to be trapped... Maybe he will not speak explicitly. But because he will not want you to miss out. He will not want you to become a casualty. Having started somewhere, he doesn't want you to fall by the wayside. He comes knocking on your door tonight. 
and say, My friend, the world passes away. Everything therein is. Only those who do the will of the Father shall endure, shall abide forever. Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. For whosoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I welcome you to this meeting. I will ask you to please rise in prayer with me tonight. And I'd like you to renew, rekindle your heart before God and say, Lord, I have come. I have come for ML out this year. You have made it possible for me to come. I have come. Lord, whatever else I came with, I want to lay it at your feet. Set the agenda for me. Set agenda for my life. And help me to walk in reality of the end time that is come upon us. Shall we pray together? Will you please rise as we call on God together, even tonight? Let's pray. Let's pray. We used to sing that song. It's coming back again. It's coming for me. Would you like to thank God that this end time is here? But it is still in this time. That God is raising an army for himself. Men that will go through all over the world. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Establishing the power of the kingdom. And bringing men out of their predicament. Unto the glorious salvation. Which Jesus Christ died and made available for us. Would you like to say to God. Check me out during this meeting. Check me out. Don't let me be lost with the deluge that is being released in my generation. It's becoming more and more difficult to be the kind of Christian that God wants you to be. Can you say, Lord, I am here? Check me out. I don't want to pass away with the world. I am not of this world. I'm of the heavenly kingdom. The world goes on its course. I plead with you, Father. I'm not going to be a casualty. The love of many as was well called. Lord, rekindle my love. Rekindle my affection for you. Help me to walk with you until I see your glory in the land of the living. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, will you please breathe upon your people tonight? Will you please, by the working of your power, Will you go reach out unto the hearts of men? Will you capture our hearts? May our love for you never grow cold. May we not get lost in this world that has given itself to pleasure, self-centeredness. Spirit of God, Will you energize your people tonight and set us ablaze? Set us ablaze. The men that turned the world upside down, the Bible said, they were men of whom the world is not worthy. They marched through their own generation and they established the kingdom of God. Father, tonight, tonight, Lord, Check out our hearts. Every strange love, every strange affection, every secret compromise. How the Bible says those foolish virgins couldn't make it because oh, they slept. They lost hold of where they are going with God. Spirit of God, 
walk among us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Love not the world. Know the things that are in the world. Whosoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. How do you know whether you love the world or not? He said, All that is in the world is not of the Father. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes. And the pride of life. These are the three tripods that the world system had used to capture all his captives. As we pray together tonight, this is the first night of this meeting. Have you been captured by the lust of the flesh? Are you captured by the lust of the eyes? Are you captured? By the pride of life. Are you a quiet victim? You are in church. Or you are a victim. Of the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. The quiet pride of life. It has, it has robbed you. Of the passion you used to have for God. It has settled you. Yes. You are in the church. You are doing many things. But it is yet. To please. The passions of the world. Love not the world. I say to you tonight. The world is going. The world is passing away. Governments of the world, they cannot stop it. If we must be in the world, we must be in the world only to affect it. But not when you have become a captive. Spirit of God, please. The first thing I ask you to do tonight, shine the light upon our hearts. Separate us, O oh God, that we may become your instrument, your agent of change, that will carry this gospel of the kingdom, where you have become the king and the Lord over our own lives. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Let me have you to please be quiet at this time because it's time to make a personal response to God. How painful it is that whereas the world system is deliberate on its own agenda. Several of our men and women have become captives of that system. They have a name that they are God's people. But in reality, they are captives of the world system. Sin, if it only abounds in the market, we would have said okay. But for the sin that has found its way into the church, into the hearts of believers, that have made men hypocrites, that has crippled our witness and testimony, that has made us largely noisemakers with little or no effect, and the world system is happy. To have a church like that. This night, God stands here. 
if you are going to be his agent of change in this world, if you are going to carry the gospel of the kingdom, you cannot also be a captive of the world. We are praying together now. And I just want to tell God that let him move in this meeting. Let him release his power. Let him rescue those that are already captured. Let the gospel exercise his power over our lives again. Let the man of Calvary reach out for those for whom he died and for whom he was buried and for whom he was raised. Spirit of God, will you please walk in this meeting? Will you first purge us of every every imperceptible capture that the world system had made among us? Are there friends of us, brothers and sisters, we call them. But the enemy laugh at us. I say you don't know them. They are in my cage. Break that cage tonight in the name of Jesus. This very night, O oh God. Why would the enemy rejoice over the heritage of the Lord? Why, O oh God, with the love of many, was called as iniquity finds itself in our midst without any challenge. Tonight, Father, shine the light. Confront this wickedness. Break its hold in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us a measure of revival again. That we may rise and fulfill our destiny in this generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.